All right, hopefully using your physics, you managed to make some sense of this. This area here, the, the first one that I asked you for, if you think about what that represents, if you draw the dimensions of it, you can make sense of what it represents without much guidance at all because um, the width of this thing here is 30 seconds. All right, that's the interval here from 70 to 100. And the height of that thing is, it's constant, right? It's traveling at a constant velocity. This height is 60 feet per second. So if you work out this area here, then if you put this down here, right, that area is whatever the width of that rectangle is, width, width, times the height. Right, because you just use, you know, using your what you know about geometry, right? Obviously, area of a rectangle. The width is the time, 30 seconds, and the height is this rate, this constant rate. Okay, in this case, it's velocity, which is it's a rate of position to time. And the reason I ask you to put the units is because the units cancel out here, right? If you got seconds times feet per second, what are the units on your answer here? Like the the number is 1,800. What are the units? Feet. Just feet, right? It's a distance. Remember before when we were looking at derivatives, if you had distance time, and this was in meters, and this was in seconds, the slope ends up being in meters per second, right? You're, you're dividing there, right? You're dividing two things, meters per second. Uh, here, with this area, or finding the area underneath the curve, you're multiplying, right, to find area. You're multiplying width by the height of the thing, and uh, you, you kind of go in reverse, right? It, it undoes what you did before, 1,800 feet. If, uh, if this was shorter, let's say that, let's try this here. Got to have some good lassoing skills for this. Okay, if we make this, actually, let's draw the rest of the graph. Let's trace the graph so we can change that, too. So there's sort of almost what the graph looks like. Pretty close. Uh, if I take this thing and get that arrow too. Uh, if you make that shorter, let's say it was half as much there. What does that represent now? The area is half as much. What happens is velocity over here. This velocity is half as much, right? 30. That area there would be now not 1,800, it would be 900, right? If you made it a shorter time interval, let's put this graph back first. If you made the time interval shorter, let's shrink this down this way. Uh, try again with the lassoing skills here. If we shrink this down to make it, you know, let's say 20 seconds instead of 30 seconds. How does that change the area? It's going to be not 1,800 now. It's only going to be 60 times 20 instead of 30, right? It's going to be 1,200. Either, either dimension you change there, the area is different. But it's important to understand that it's, it represents the net change in whatever this is. If this is, this thing is the rate of change of position. This is the rate. Here it's the rate of change of position as compared to time. We're going to extend that. We're starting with this situation involving velocity because you're familiar with it. But this could be the rate of anything and you'd get the same situation here, right? If this was... Um, not feet per second, but let's say you're uh, you're cleaning something up. Uh, I don't know. You're cleaning up some spilled uh, water on the floor or something like that. And this is in gallons per minute or something like that that you're cleaning it up. And then this was now in this was in minutes. The units would cancel just the same way, right? If you have the rate of something. And you have a graph of that compared to whatever this unit is, they're always going to cancel, right? What you get is you get the net change in this. Okay, so if you had gallons per minute and you um, had a graph of that compared to minutes, like this thing would represent you're starting off not cleaning it up at all, and then you get up to some constant rate that you're sucking up this water or however you're cleaning it up, right? And the farther along this goes, the more water you're cleaning up, right? If this just keep, if this area keeps getting bigger, 
that area just represents more and more water that you've cleaned up, right? So whatever it is, whatever this is the rate of, the area represents the net change in that quantity. Even if the area is not a nice geometric figure to work with, like this one, right? I'm thinking in physics you haven't worked with sort of oddball shaped areas like this. But doesn't it make sense that that, that area still represents the net change? What if, uh, what if we had it like this? What if somehow you could, you know, if you could instantly go up to it that speed and then go across, this is going to be 30 seconds, even though my scale of my graph doesn't look great because that one looks narrower. But if you could instantly already be traveling at that speed and this was all filled in too, it'd be the same thing. It'd be 30 times 60, right? You'd get 1,800 feet. If, if this was really, you know, you're, you, you don't start till the end and then you uh, ramp up to there at the end of the 30 seconds, will that represent any kind of a change there if this is the only area down here? If you take forever to start the cleanup and after, at 29 seconds, you start actually cleaning it up, you're not going to have cleaned up very much. That's not that much area. The area represents the net change in whatever that quantity is. So even though it's an odd shape, it still represents that. How can you possibly estimate that? I don't know. Any ideas? This is a bit lower here, the top of that thing. You could use, you could sort of, you know, maybe draw a triangle here and say it's approximately this. Well, I didn't draw it that well. It doesn't really look like a triangle, but certainly it's more than that, do you think? It's more than that? If this is 30 and this is 60, then that triangle's half of that, half of 1,800, right? That area. It's a bit more than that, right? So half of 1,800, 900 feet, maybe more than that, 1,000 feet, something like that. Okay, but the point is understanding that that area represents that net change, all right? Hopefully you're okay with that, with the meaning of area underneath. Now before we finish, there's one more thing to think about. You don't need calculus for this one because it's this is a geometric shape we can use. It's a rectangle, right? You do need calculus for this, whether you know the function or not, um, the concept. Calculus deals with variable quantities like this, right? This is a curve. It's not a static, it's not something, it's not a constant velocity. It's not a straight line. That's where you need calculus, right? What you move on to now is doing some approximations, figuring out how to find areas under curve.